This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Good morning. Good morning. So in the last lecture we discussed about uh, emitter follower or common collector amplifier. That is our last topology in the BJT amplifier. So in the emitter follower what we do is we connect a signal at the base and then we get output from the emitter. So that is the reason we call it as uh, emitter follower and then we said the emitter follower has a very high input impedance and very low output impedance. Emitter fo follower is used as a buffer amplifier, buffer voltage amplifier. Emitter follower lowers the source impedance by a factor of beta plus one. That is the reason we discussed R out. When you see from here, when you have this RS 
when there is no early effect, you get 1 by gm plus rs by beta. So your source impedance is uh, reduced by beta plus 1, improved the driving capability. Then with early effect, the only difference is uh, we will take into account ro, then still rs by beta plus 1. Your source impedance is decreased and plus 1 by gm parallel re parallel ro. So that is an emitter follower. Then, why do we need emitter follower? Maybe an example will help you. So, we are going to set the collector voltage 1.5 volt. So, this is 1 milliamps, not 1 millivolt. So, it's 1 milliamps. So, this is a simple topology. And then here, what we have done is, uh, we have connected a microphone. So, what I am going to do is, uh, I am going to show you this uh, emitter follower is definitely needed in the electronic circuit as a buffer when you have some impedance mismatching problem, impedance mismatching. And then I'm going to show you an example how emitter follower is solving an issue. So this is amplifier circuit. We have connected 100 kilo ohm here, that is RB. RC is 1 kilo ohm, VCC 2.5 volt. Then we set VC equal to 1.5 volt by adjusting this, this is 1K, and then 100 kilo ohm, and then if you got IC equal to 1 milliamps, you get around VC equal to 1.5 volt, means DC value. Then when you connect your microphone, what will happen is your microphone signal will be varying from this 1.5 up and down. So voltage gain, the magnitude. So the game, I haven't taken into account the sign because it's a, that, that is due to the signal inversion. So the magnitude equal to GM into RC. So GM equal to collector current by thermal voltage. So here the collector current equal to 1 milliamps thermal voltage equal to 26 millivolt into 1K RC. So you got to gain 38.4. So your, your signal will be amplified by this amplifier by 38.4. Then what we did is we connected a speaker. So this is what you wanted. You wanted 38, 38.4. You designed an amplifier. Then you give a, given to someone else and said, okay, my gain is 38.4. This amplifier we designed for 38.4. Then Somebody go to your amplifier and then they connect a speaker for amplifying because here you've got a microphone and then here is a speaker. So when they connect the speaker, the problem is the speaker is uh, the, the impedance of the speaker, input impedance is 8 ohms. And then what will happen is uh, your VC will reduce to 0 0.011. Why? Because this RC is in parallel with this 8 ohms. So because of that reason, your VC will become 8 ohms into VC divided by 8 ohm plus 1 kilo ohm, which is equal to 0 0.011. Then the whoever is you are giving your amplifier, that person might say, no, 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 your, your amplifier is operating in the saturation mode. You haven't you know, set your parameters correctly. But then you will say that, you know, we set, your, set the parameters correctly, the amplifier uh, indeed operating in the active region. In fact, it got gain of 38.4. Then again, that person will say, no, your gain is only 0 0.3, less than 1, when we connect the speaker. So then who is correct? Both the people are correct. Because this is your gain. You have designed it properly. But when the peop somebody is connecting a speaker, then because of this 8 terms, this is the range of the speaker impedance, input impedance. It, it may be sometimes it may be eight, 5 ohms, 8 terms. Why the impedance is low for the speaker? Because in the speaker, what is happening is your current is going in and then you got the coils. And then there are the coils and then, they, then you got the magnet and then you got the diaphragm because the current is going through the coil and then the diaphragm is vibrating. Because of the coil in the speaker, that's the reason you get a very uh, small impedance value. Maybe 8 ohms, around 8 ohms, that is the value. Then now you got two issues. One is uh, your transistor when to saturation, when you connect your speaker, then your gain reduced it to 0 0.31. So you don't have any gain, rather it is attenuating. So GM into RC parallel RS, then this is a 8 ohms. Then how we can solve this issue? That is a question. So without speaker 38.4, since the speaker incorporates a solenoid, I told you solenoid inside, there's a coil, inductor, to actuate a membrane with a low DC resistance, means then only you get the sound. That is the reason your impedance is small. It's around 1 to 8 ohms. Inductor short the collector at DC and therefore push the transistor into deep saturation. So that's what it is happening. Then, 
Then my question is, uh, how will you solve this problem? Like you encountered this issue, this is your amplifier. Then how will you, then the person who bought your amplifier came back and then said, this is the issue. So what will, you, what will you do? You take back your amplifier and give the money back. Other than that, what solution? Maybe the person might ask, okay, what will you offer? You have got two issues. One is uh, your transistor is going to the saturation. Another one is the gain is reducing. You don't get the gain. Maybe we can look at the first issue. How will you solve the first issue? So you want to have VC 1.5 volt. What you can do? So if you increase RC, so you want to decrease RC. So if you decrease RC, you got 8 ohms into 1.5 divided by 8 ohm plus maybe you take 500 ohm, but then your gain will decrease. Your signal, yes, you are decreasing the gain, but then you can increase this one slightly, because if you put this one 500 ohm, then this will become 508. Still 8 by 500 into uh, 1.5 volt, is still it will be in the saturation region. Yeah, yeah, good thinking. Yeah, you can reduce the RC, but it, is, it will not solve the problem. Other way. Yeah, yeah, so you can add a capacitor here. The capacitor, what it does is, uh, when you add a capacitor here, a coupling capacitor, then this capacitor will block the DC. So that the DC here, it will stay here. That's what we did here, if you recall. Here we got uh, maybe 0.7 volt, then you bias it. Then if you don't have this capacitor, actually your microphone got an output impedance that is very small. And then what will happen is, uh, then this voltage will become maybe 0.1 or something because of, uh, uh, low output impedance of the microphone, then this uh, transistor will be off. Then uh, to avoid that when we connect the trans uh, capacitor here, the advantage of capacitor is uh, this capacitor will block DC, but then the signal from here it will pass through. So same way we can add a capacitor here. So when you add a capacitor here, then your VCE, that will become here still 5 volt. But then when you add a capacitor, will it solve the gain problem? How many of you think that that will solve the gain problem? Okay, nobody. So everybody thinks that that will not solve the gain problem. Then why? Why it will not solve the gain problem? If you are adding a capacitor. Yeah, yeah, because in the small signal, the capacitor will be a short. So that's the reason we need something to connect here. That will solve this problem. Say a buffer can solve this issue. So that's the reason the buffer amplifier is important. Okay, now we will uh, go ahead. So this is the 8 ohm, then you got VC equal to 0 0.011. Since the speaker incorporates a solenoid inductor to actuate a membrane with a low DC resistance. And uh, so that is the 8 ohm. So we can connect a capacitor. So if you connect a capacitor, what is happening is uh, you will still get uh, uh, the gain problem, but this transistor will not be in the saturation region. So now your transistor is operating in the active region and then your VC will be 1.5 volt but the gain problem is not solved because for the signal the capacitor is a short. When you draw a small signal then what you draw is RC and then you got the speaker coming like this. Maybe I can draw the small signal and show you. So for the for the signal what is happening is a, so you got your, uh, yeah, so that is your, uh, uh, maybe that's your speaker. So that is ground, and then I'm going to draw the small, so this is first maybe I'll draw the transistor. So this is a transistor, this is your RC. This is the ground, and then this is a capacitor, and then this is your speaker. So speaker, something like this, and then this is 8 ohms, this is uh, 1K, this is uh, 100K, and then this is your 2.5 volt. So when we draw the small signal, so this is your microphone, so I'll represent at a voltage source, and then, uh, so maybe this positive, negative, I'm just putting some value, capacitor is a short, and then your, this one, that is going to a constant DC voltage, so that is coming to ground, so that is equal to 100 kilo ohm. Then what you got is, uh, your R pi, R pi, 
then ground, then voltage controlled current source, and then uh, you got again. I'm going to take RO, early effect, then uh, 1K. This 1K is connected to 2.5, so that uh, this is uh, 1K. Yeah, then capacitor is short. See, for the signal, what is happening is, uh, again, you got 8 ohms. So your gain equal to GM, RC, parallel, RO, parallel, 8 ohms. So if you don't take into account early effect, this will be infinity. Even if your RO is very large, so this will go away. So that you get a GM, RC, still parallel that 8 ohms will come because of this short, because capacitor is a short in the small signal. So this is not solving the gain issue. So when you set a collector voltage of 1.5 volt and IC equal to 1 milliamps, sorry, this is not VA, then if you got an IS, we can find out from the data sheet the IS for this transistor. That could be around 5 into 10 to the power of minus 17. Minus 17, that is the order. Then we can actually find out what is a VBE. So if you know IS and IC, VBE equal to VT, LN, IC by IS. So if you know VBE, then what you can find out is from this Kirchhoff's law, if you apply Kirchhoff's law, you can find out IB, which is equal to VCC minus VB by RB. So that is equal to 17 microamps. And then uh, because you got a collector current 1 milliamps, so your beta equal to 58.8 means still there is a current gain. The current gain is there, but then we are not making a use of that gain. Means that much current is coming. So if you put uh, a resistor, you should get the gain. But the problem is uh, because of this uh, small impedance, then we are not able to solve this issue. So then GM, GM is uh, 0.038. And then the voltage gain still uh, it is equal to 0 0.31 because of this RS, RC parallel RS. So without speaker 38.4, your gain with speaker and capacitor, now it is 0 0.31. So now by connecting a capacitor, you have solved one issue. Now the transistor is operating in the active region and then your VC equal to 1.5 volt here. So transistor in the active region, no gain because that is a now issue. So then if you th think the amplifier design evolution, what we have discussed is uh, first we connected something like this. If you recall, we connected the microphone directly here. So then we found out, no, that will not work because you got, uh, there is no bias here. Then you need bias. It should be forward biased, so you can't connect like this. Then what we, we found out, uh, that current is going to be very small. If you connect directly, your collector current is going to be in minus 15 amps, very, very small. Then we said we need to provide a biasing using maybe this resistor or you can use the resistor divider. There are different biasing schemes. But then if you connect again your speaker directly, what will happen is this, this speaker got a very small uh, output impedance around 100 ohm. And then uh, what will happen is uh, then your input here again, this will be off because it's 2 point millivolt. Your diode, this part is kind of off. This is again not in the active region. Then we came up with the idea, we will connect a capacitor. So when you connect a capacitor, that will block the DC voltage here. This will not happen, this problem. And then uh, your signal will pass through the capacitor. Then what we did is a transistor in the active region. Because in these two cases, transistor is not in the active region because uh, here you don't have the forward bias. Here you don't have the forward bias. Without connecting the speaker, you got forward bias, but when you connect the speaker, you are losing the forward bias. That's what you see, Vx equal to 2.5 millivolt. Then you got a transistor in the active region. Then what you did is, uh, then you connect the speaker in the output. Then that made you to, then the VC came down. So transistor in the saturation. Then what you did is, you connected a capacitor. Then what happened is the transistor in the active region. So now capa sorry, now the capacitor is solved one issue. Now your transistor is in the active region, but still no gain. Now we are going to see how to solve transistor in the active region, no gain, how to solve this issue. So I have just you know showed you an overview so that you know you know what we are talking about. So that's the reason we connect a buffer here. So the buffer, what it does is the buffer got a very high input impedance and very low output impedance. So, so we can connect a emitter fallover, maybe biased at a current of 5 milliamps. 
so then we are connecting a buffer here this red block so that is this buffer that is q2 so this emitter follower you can bias at a current of 5 milliamps using a constant current source so if you make a circuit something like this it can solve the issue so then i will come back to the drawing and i will show you because you have not learned the current source yeah so here what we do is we connect a buffer here that's what that's our idea so when you connect a buffer here it can solve the issue the so when you connect the buffer so when you have emitter follower so this is a simple emitter follower so you got re and then this will be connecting to the vcc and then this is a simple emitter follower and then you take your output from here then for the emitter follower if you recall the equation for the voltage gain so what is the voltage gain equation do you recall re by 1 by gm plus re so this is the equation and then then what is happening is this re plays a role if this re is very very small then you are gain you are attenuating your signal so if it is a buffer you get approximately equal to 1 that is our idea so your voltage gain should be approximately equal to 1 but you don't want to your uh, emitter follower is uh, attenuating the signal then if that is the case your re should be very high so in order to make re very high then what people often do is uh, then not only r is going to very high you also need some current because you need you, you want to have some good current amplification maybe you want to have a good ic big little bit a bigger ic value because if you are driving your speaker you may need more current then you have two requirements one is you should have a bigger ic value then you should have a bigger re value then most of the time then the ideal solution will be re should be close to infinity okay but then in order to increase the gain a simple case in this equation you want to make your gain approximately equal to 1 otherwise you are attenuating your signal then you increase your re to a very large value maybe close to infinity so when re is close to infinity what will happen yeah, yeah, yeah because then your collector current you know it's a, it's, it's a problem your transistor got a problem then in order to avoid that one what people do is they connect a constant dc current source and then the, this current source like using a transistor you can make a dc current source how to make is uh, you give a constant uh, voltage here and then this is actually a current source why because when you are operating in this region when you have this is ic and then this is a vc and then if you are operating in this region then it is acting as a current source because your current source current is constant when the voltage is varying so you can connect maybe a transistor here and then make a constant current source and then the current source the current you can set why because your ic equal to is into exponential vb by vt so a particular vb the current is constant so that is the reason people in the real design they use a current source here and then that will set to some value maybe 5 milliamps so that is your collector current that is your emitter current the advantage is then what is happening is uh, your r is very very high then your gain up, up approximately equal to 1 means you are you, you are getting a voltage gain of nearly equal to 1 so that is the reason people connect a current source here so that is the reason we have connected a current source here then another thing is uh, when you connect a current source your gain is very high you are you can decide what is the current required so you are getting some current maybe here i have taken 5 milliamps as an example so we have connected an emitter follower here so that is the reason we have connected emitter follower so now what is happening is output of q1 is going to the base and then that is going to this transistor and then from the emitter we are connecting a capacitor and then connecting to the speaker and then this is a bigger re but then in the real case people will design a current source here and then that will bias to a particular current the required current you can connect a simple uh, the best way of connecting is maybe you connect a transistor here with a proper bias dc voltage at the base and then maybe you connect emitter resistor so that your output impedance is very high and then so this this will solve the problem how it will solve the problem because gm equal to ic by v, vt and then we know the value of gm from the previous case r pi equal to beta by gm and then what will be 520 then this is a reason now your input impedance so when you look from here 
what is your input impedance of emitter follower? That is equal to R pi 2, that is R pi 2, into beta plus 1 into RSP. That is a speaker uh, impedance. That is equal to 1328 ohms. So that is a impedance uh, when you uh, look from here. See, that is very simple. So when you have an emitter follower, So when you have emitter follower, so this is your emitter follower. So if you got a RE, so if you are not connecting the current source, I am just connecting the RE. So then when I look from here, what is the input impedance? My input impedance is equal to R pi plus, we already derived, beta plus 1 into RE, when you look from here. But then when you connect a current source, then I am going to connect a speaker here. See, when you connect a speaker here, 8 ohms, then what is happening is the RE, that is coming in parallel with your 8 ohms. You know what I meant? But then, because if you connect a current source here, then what is the impedance of an ideal current source? Yeah, yeah, infinity. So that is the reason this will be RE parallel 8 ohm. If RE is a very big value, then this will go away, and then the lower value will predominate in the parallel combination. So that is the reason you are getting R pi plus beta plus 1 into this is a actually the impedance of the speaker, RSP. So that is the reason here we have got the equation R pi 2 plus beta plus 1 into RSP because your R is kind of a close to infinity, bigger value because you have connected a current source. If you don't connect a current source, we will have that R E value. So this is R E parallel RSP. You know what I meant? That is equal to 1328 ohms. Now your input impedance when you look from here is 1328 ohms. Now, voltage gain with speaker and buffer equals, earlier here the gain is 38.4. Now, you are getting a potential divider, 1K, here you got 1K, and then when you look from here, what is happening is that is 1328, that is a higher impedance. So then you can get here then 1K in parallel with 1328, which is equal to 21. So you got a gain of 21, you know what I meant? Because from here, the problem is, uh, when you look from here, the impedance is 8 ohms. So somehow we have to bring up this impedance, when you look from here. Then, because this 1 kilo ohm is coming in parallel with 8 ohms. So how we are boosting is, uh, from here, we have connected this uh, emitter follower. So now when you look from here, from this dot, see that is this dot. When you look from this dot, this is 1 kilo ohm, this is 8 ohms. So both are coming in parallel. And then this is 8 ohms. But then now when you look from the same dot, here you got again 1 kilo ohm. But then when you look into here, you are seeing 1328 ohms because of this input impedance of the buffer. So both are coming in parallel. So, so the, your gain up to here, it will become 38.4 into 1328 divided by 1k plus 1328, which is equal to 21. Then it is 1328 ohms. But then uh, you get the same gain. 38.4 provided what should be the input impedance of the buffer? Very high infinity. So if you connect an ideal buffer, what will happen is uh, your 1328, this value is close to infinity, and then what will happen is uh, this will cancel out and you get to still here 38.4, close to that one. But because this buffer got a finite impedance, that is the reason you get to always less than 38.4. You know what I meant? Then, so this will solve the issue. So without speaker 38.4, with speaker uh, and without buffer 0 0.31, that is your gain. Now with speaker and buffer, you got a gain of 21. See, that's how, that's how we solve the issue. So we need a buffer. Whenever you have this type of impedance mismatch, impedance mismatch means some of your parameters reduced because you are connecting something, maybe one stage to another stage, or you are connecting a speaker, or you are connecting another sensor then you can think of connecting a voltage buffer. So that is, we can connect a emitter follower. So here we have used a simple transistor as a emitter follower, but then when we use a simple transistor as an emitter follower, the input impedance got a limited value, like 1, 3, 2, 8 ohms. But then in the market, if you see, you can buy buffer ICs, operation amplifier. So in the operation amplifier, what they are doing is they connect so many transistors in the operation amplifier, and so that your output input impedance is very high. Because using one transistor, you get only 1, 3, 2, 8 ohms. So if you connect an operation amplifier based buffer here, maybe you get here maybe 30. You know what I meant? Because that got a very high input impedance. 
So this is we have done using only one transistor. So voltage gain without speaker connected uh, with voltage gain without speaker connected. See, it, then you connect it, then you don't have an issue. Um, so this is for trying at home. So emitter follower as a buffer. Example two, try at home. So you got this is a simple amplifier. One kilo ohm beta equal to hundred. Then uh, AV without speaker connected is twenty. So here you get twenty ohm, and then beta equal to hundred. So this is a speaker got eight ohms. So my question is, uh, AV with eight ohm speaker, your gain reduced to zero point one five nine. Then you have to design emitter follower biased at a current of maybe five milliamps. We taken as a five milliamps IC current. Then you have to find out uh, AV with emitter follower. Your voltage gain with emitter follower. What we did, you have to repeat it. See, all are given. You have to find out these values. So this is now our amplifier. And then uh, my question is, uh, AV without speaker connected is 20. Earlier it was 38.4. Now you got 20. And then you are connecting a speaker. Then the gain reduced it to 0.159. Now you have to. Find out when you connect a emitter follower of same bias current, then what will be the gain with emitter follower? So buffer amplifier, as I said, you can see high speed buffer amplifier. You can buy, see BUF 600 is an example. So a monolithic open loop unity gain. See the gain is close to unity. Buffer amplifier with a high symmetrical slew rate up to 336. 3600 uh, volt per microsecond 3600 volt per microsecond and very wide band with 320 megahertz 5 volt peak to peak output sync so you can see the specifications and then this one got a very high uh, in input impedance so then open loop then they have given the bandwidth and then they have given the gain flatness means it is a kind of you know close to one So the video applications buffer. If you want to buy a video application, you can buy buffer. Input slash output amplifier for measurement equipment. Because when you make measurement equipments in the instrumentation, you have this issue when you connect a sensing device something in the input or input when you connect it. Then in transmission systems, ultrasound, telecommunications, most of the places you will find this impedance issue, impedance mismatching issue. Then you can. Uh, Use op-amp based buffer. In the operation amplifier based buffer, the advantage is they have got so many transistors, so you get a very high input impedance and a very low output impedance. So then, uh, what we have studied is uh, we have studied the transistor. Then we started making a transistor uh, using. Uh, uh, we made started making amplifier using transistor. Then we have studied different ways of connecting your speaker, and then we came up to the idea. We need a bias because in order to operate a transistor as an amplifier, we need a bias. You can't connect a simple microphone, as I discussed in the previous case. And then we, when we connect it, we have issue. Then we connected a capacitor to solve that issue. Then we connected speaker directly. We got problems. And then uh, we connected a capacitor to solve one issue, that is to bring back transistor in the active region. And then now when you connected a buffer. So you have solved the issue. So that's how we will be designing a complete, you know, set of amplifier. And then that, I think that's all about the BJT. And then I will start the CMOS because CMOS is important in the next uh, next lecture. But then now I will show you some problems. So I will release the problem set uh, today. And then there are some quizzes uh, on BJT. So you can also try the quizzes. So when you when you try the quizzes, if you are getting full, then you are in a good condition. You understood all the concepts. If you haven't got the full, then you have to read the textbook, my slides, and then you procure the textbook and then get the full for the quiz. And then, if you have any questions, you can come and see me. So I also will put uh, uh, the answers on the LMS so that you can check your answers in the quiz. So you can give quiz maybe you know so many times. There is no mark associated with it, so you can try so many times and learn it. But then, please don't try trial and error like in one quiz. You tried A. In the next time you try B. That is not really a good way of you know learning. Better you know go back and uh, uh, do it again. Even if something is correct, that is not based on your calculation. Still you have to you know do it that one. <laughs> like you click A. Oh yeah, A was correct. But still you know if you don't know why it was correct, then you should derive it. 
so, so these are some problem sheet and uh, the, the problem sheet I will release the problem sheet you can see on the LMS but then you please try by yourself then I will release the answer maybe after a week so please don't wait until I release the answer because that is not at all good based on my experience so I have seen uh, students like you know, when I, I was a student uh, you know a couple of years ago so I also got the problem sheet and then what I did is initially oh yeah all the problem sheet I read it yeah the problem number one then I look at the answer wow why why everything is easy you know <laughs> then when I went to the mid semester test I got stuck because when you read the problem when you see the answer there is you know, everything is simple but if you are doing if you are not doing by yourself when you sit in the exam hall you will get stuck so better you try by yourself get stuck and then you read the answers that is a better way especially for electronics so then I will go through a couple of uh, questions so first one is uh, compute the bias points of the circuits depicted in the below means uh, compute the bias points of the circuits below so you got three circuits then bias points construct small signal equivalent of each of the circuits in the problem so here in all the circuits you have to construct the small signal model yeah so before that so I'm going to take this first uh, first one as an example so I'm going to compute the bias points so I have to compute the B, 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 I have to compute the I, B, I have to compute the I, C, so all these values I have to compute. But then they have given only beta is equal to 100, I s equal to 6 into 10 to the power of minus 16, and then V a equal to infinity. You don't have to take into account early effect. So these are the values, and then when you look at the circuit, you got 2.5 volt, then 100 kilo ohm, then 500 ohm. Then we, here there is no instruction that you can assume VB equal to 0 0.7. If that is not given, you can't assume VB equal to 0 0.7 because that is wrong. So that is what I want to teach you. That is the reason I have picked up uh, this particular problem for discussing in the lecture because other problems you can uh, easily understand that is related to the amplifier. So this is the first question. In the first question, so you go to 500 ohm. So this is a 500 ohm and then this is the Q1. Yep. So this is a 500 ohm and then uh, so this is a 100 kilo ohm. So this is 100 kilo ohm, then here you have got a 2.5 volt. So what you have given is a beta is here 100, then Is which is equal to 6 into 10 to the power of minus 16 ampere. So that's all given. Then how to solve the equation? So if you write down the equation, then I'm going to try to solve the equation. So 2.5, that is a VCC equal to IB, RB, so this is RB, this is RC plus VB here VCC equal to IC RC plus VC IC IS exponential VB by VT so I, I wrote down all the possible equations but then the problem here I got RB I got RC see here I know VCC here I know RB but I don't know IB I don't know VB you know problem but then you can't find out VB without IB or other way around because your IC equal to IS into exponential VB by VT or I can write this one as a beta times IB equal to IS into exponential VB by VT. So for the transistor, if you don't know VB, you can't find out IB or IC or if you can find out IB or IC, you can find out VB. So that's the reason for simply solving the problems we will assume okay VB equal to approximately 0.7 volt and then uh, then we can solve all these equations but if VB is not given it is not asked to assume 0.7 volt then how will you do it because you can assume you can uh, maybe this group may be assume 0.7 you can assume 0.75 maybe those guys will assume 0.8 which one is correct then how to check it so in order to solve the problem then we have to guess some value and then we have to check it for example I can assume VB equal to maybe 0.7 volt I am just assuming and then what I will do is uh, this VB then I will find out uh, this collector current because this is an expression for the collector current then I can apply here so here IB equal to VCC minus VB by RB and then if I multiply this into beta times I will get IC so I can find out IB 
and then I will find out IC. So from here I will find out IB. So 0.7 is my assumption or guess value. I put 0.7 here, VCC is known, RB is known, then I am getting some value X microamps. Then I will find out IC, that is equal to beta times your X microamps. Then what I will do is, I will find out this IC, I will put it here and find out VB again, back calculate. If my IC is this much, I should be able to get, you know, if my guess is correct, when I put this equation IC here, and then IS is known, VB should be 0.7. So then I will find out, so VB, which is equal to VT times LN IC by IS. Then I will kind find out, you know, using this VB, I will find out using the IC that, uh, this IC. So I will put in here. If I get VB equal to 0.7 volt, then our assumption is correct. If we don't get 0.7 volt, you get 0.75 volt, then our assumption is not correct. Then how will you do? You can do maybe another guess, 0.71, and then come back. Instead of doing that one, we go with iteration. Iteration means if you are getting 0.7 here, again we will put in this 0.7 in this equation. And then again we will calculate, you know, like, you know, whatever value you are getting again put in. So that is called an iterative technique. And the iteration will carry on until both are matching. Yeah, so then it is correct. That's the only way we can find out. So that's called iterative method. So this is an example of an iterative method. You don't have to do like uh, so many times, maybe three, four times it will be okay. See, this is a circuit which I already ex uh, explained. So IB equal to VCC minus VB by 100 kilo ohm. So you can see here, which already got the equation. So you can find out IB. Then IC equal to beta times IB. Then VB, that is equal to VT into LN into IC by IS, which we already got it. Then GUS, VB equal to 0.7. So we already called, then we are going to use this equation to find out IB. So I equal to B, so IC equal to beta times IB. So then here IB, I substitute this, I, this equation. So then collector current, beta times VCC minus VB, your GUS divided by 100 kilo ohm, you got 1.8 milliamps. Then you are going to put that 1.8 milliamps in this equation and back calculate. So that is equal to VB equal to VT LN IC by IEC, 0.747. That is not acceptable. Your assumption is 0.7. So then we are going to iteration. So we will take 0.747 again as the input value. So now we will take this 0.747 as the VB. Then again you calculate IC, 1.753 milliamps. Again put in this equation. Then your VB equal to 0.7. Four, six. Because you started from 0 0.747, you don't have to look at your first guess. You can look at your the one that you started here. You started with the 0 0.747, then here it is 0 0.746. If the third digit is varying, that is fine. That accuracy is okay. Then see, converged. Then you got your VB, see. Then you can find out VC equal to VCC minus ICRC, and then you can get all the ICIB values. You know what I meant? But then, here it converged maybe after two steps. Then, if it is not converging, see, you started with 0 0.747. If it is 0 0.74, 0 0.756, again you have to take 0 0.756 and then you keep continue. Until when it is matching, other way, both, then you got it. See, even if you don't know the VB, we can find out the VB using the iterative method. So, that is the power of the iterative method. Yeah, then, another one uh, uh, here, here you have to do maybe a couple of times because you can start from, so you, then you will ask which value I should start, 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.75, we, we don't know. You can start from point, uh, whichever the initial value, the final result will be same. Like here you can see, for this circuit I got uh, 0 0.746. Okay, so the last digit is okay, okay, third digit is fine, but then this 0 0.74, that is the kind of answer. I may start with uh, 0 0.71, you may start with 0 0.7, but all will get the same. So you can, maybe 0 0.7 is a good number to start in a guess, 0 0.7. But here we took the 0 0.8 to show you that, you know, different number also will work out. And then you got IC1. When you iterate, you see, you are getting only 0 0.728 volt, but not 0 0.8, because that is our guess value. Then you use this 0 0.28, Again, you calculate uh, 0.9 and then VB to 0.728. Then uh, iterate once more and then uh, you can do it in iteration a couple of times and find out. And then there are other problems uh, uh, that are uh, related to the amplifier. Then drawing the small signal, which all these things I think you don't need any much help. But then the, these things uh, uh, you need some help. Uh, that's the reason I have shown you. 
So then we have finished the BJT part, then I will start the CMOS part. CMOS also, if you understood the BJT, it is very easy to study CMOS. Because the CMOS, the input impedance, so, the, so in the BJT we got R pi, but when it comes to MOS circuit, R pi equal to infinity. So then it is very easy to understand MOS. And then small signal, you would love MOS than BJT. Because BJT, your R pi will create a confusion when you are writing down the equation. But if you get rid of the R pi, then R pi equal to infinity, then uh, you can easily solve the small signal. And CMOS is uh, ruling the world because CMOS circuits in your uh, mobile phone, your laptop, most of the case you see the MOS based design, not BJT based design. That's uh, only I think a few, few places you will see BJT based design because MOS fabrication technology has advanced a lot. And then that's the reason you see MOS based designs. Then the mid-semester test, some of you asked me about the mid-semester test. So we are planning to have mid-semester test after the Easter. So mid-semester test will be after the Easter. The date will be announced on LMS. I'm waiting to hear from the teaching office regarding the whole booking. Because we need a two hall, because we got around 250 students. And then I will get in touch with you. So it will be after Easter. So you got time. So we will make sure that it will not clash with any of your other exams. I think most of them are before Easter. I think you got only two after the Easter and uh, exams, if I am if I am correct. And uh, so the mid-semester test will carry 10 percentage of your final marks. So please take it serious. The 10 percentage is, uh, now it is kind of, you will think 10 percentage, but 10 percentage is a big percentage at the end. Many students failed for like 2, 3 percentage, 4 percentage. So the 10 is actually a big number, especially if you are aiming for H1, this 10 percentage is a big number. Like, for example, if you get 10 percentage, then you already got 10, you know, then you are studying only for 90. So the 10 is an important number, and then it's only, uh, the, the, the questions will be set for 50 minutes. So, but we got one hour, but the questions will be set for 50 minutes. You will be able to answer it, uh, answer all the questions within uh, 50 minutes. And then it will cover both BJT and CMOS. This, these are the two topics we will be covering. And then for the consultation, what we are planning is, because you have got more questions uh, from the lab, so then I will announce it uh, again on the LMS. So we have two consultations only for the lectures. First two consultations, then the last one is only for the lab. So that if you go to the lab, because some students they come, because the lab questions take time, then I don't get time to talk to the people who got doubts from the lectures. So the two first two consultations for the lectures and the final one only for the lab. So. So you can, if you have any questions related to the lab, you please come for the last, you know, the third consultation. You know, the third, we got three consultations. And then if you got any questions related to the lectures, please come and see me for the first two consultations. Then people who are repeating the subject. So if you want to get some feedback, I am happy to give the feedback for those who are repeating the subject from the last year. Yeah, so I'll see you then uh, next week. Thank you.
我想的。